So, uh, this is a good mix for you, I think, because a lot of fans know you as, you know, your character yourself. You see things like The Crow or Final Destination 5, which means I'm not going to get a little too close during this interview. The light looks a little creaky, but, you know, I think we're safe for the moment. Um, but you do a lot of costume work as well. What's the difference? Do you process that differently as an actor? Do you no, approach it differently? I, acting is the same elemental force, no matter what the characters, mm-hmm. straight drama, western, sci-fi, horror, it's all the mm-hmm. same thing, which is starting with the story, right. finding a way to relate to the character, what part of you identifies with that, and it's telling the truth within mm-hmm. that confine. I mean, I come from a theater background. Right, I got my right. master's in theater. Mm-hmm. So costumes obviously comes easy. I try to find the part that's me, and then you put something on that mm-hmm. is something else. Right. And you merge the two together. The thing about the costume pieces, though, especially at a convention, is are you surprised when people recognize you in a role that they shouldn't actually recognize you in? No, I take any recognition as a blessing, period. But, you know, what I find about Dragon Con specifically, mm-hmm. most people, I spent about 15 minutes last night outside the Sheridan mm-hmm. in a hidden van <laughs> in a little CIA thing, and I was just recording on my flip. Yeah. I don't want to, it's no product placement. But yeah. Generic just, video camera. And I was just watching people go in and out. Mm-hmm. And it was the same amount of people going in as they were going out. Mm-hmm. And everybody was dressed wonderfully. Everybody had such absolute joy in their face. Whether they were puking or whether they were going somewhere where they were going to puke or whether they were alone or alone, they right. all had this permission yes. to be themselves. Right. Right? And I think that's the essence of this. Yeah. And even when I decompress, because when I spend six hours, I have to go away yes. for a second, just for me. Yes. I have to go to it. And when I go to a new city, I try to find the best restaurants or the best blues or the best mm-hmm. jazz. Yeah. So I did all that. But I came home early last night. And after doing that, what do you think I did? You... Instead of decompressing. Well, no, it was a form of decompression. Yeah. Turn on Dragon Con TV? Exactly. I went Thank you. upstairs. <laughs> no joke. And I and first of all, they don't have a remote control in my room, oh. which I complained for two days. And, and we're like somewhere in the like sixties or seventies, right? So yeah, like, yeah. So I'm on the side <laughs> of the thing, going like this. Had to get up in the bed, okay? Like it's torture these days. Anyway, I, I stumbled on Dragon Con TV. Yeah. And, and and I watched it for a good half hour, and I said, I like "What am I do. doing? <laughs> Wasn't this the very thing that you were trying to get away from?" And I even put it on my generic video camera. Really? Yeah, because there's a lot of people that depend on what I do for their livelihood, like ex-wives. And I said, you know what? (laughs) It's going to be obligatory that you have to watch two hours of footage Mm -hmm. from Dragon Con before I give you anything. (laughs) So uh, we're going to let you go, man. But it was great seeing you. Awesome hearing your voice in the real world. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you had a good time. Oh, I did. Thank you. Excellent.